Apple just released 10.4.1 this morning on closed captioning. If you go up to our YouTube channel, we, there's a movie up there that explains all the features right now. I was going to show it to you, but well, you can just get it all from the movie. Anyway, thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks for being here and listening to me next uh, 14.30. There's a clock right there that's <laughs> letting me know what's going on. So I thought I'd do a presentation called uh, Working Smarter and Faster. And these are basically a compendium of my favorite shortcuts, tips, tricks that, I, that allow me to work faster. Final Cut in itself is a very fast application. That's why so many of the LumaForge folks like it uh, in their own editing environment. But uh, you're just going to see some of, my, again, my best tips. I'm going to go through them as um, a breakneck as I can, and we'll see how many I can get through. Maybe uh, I can do them one a minute. We'll see. Okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna, we're going to start with just something that a lot of people are con uh, tend to be confused about, and that's um, uh, secondary storylines. Okay, so as you know, you have the primary storyline here, and this is where your, your story is told, and then you connect B-roll on top of it using what's known as a connect edit. But one of the things about connecting clips is that if you want to do, do a ripple trim on something, it's, they behave a little bit different than clips that are in the primary storyline and that they're, they're, the magnetic timeline seems to be in play there, but not so much uh, when you do things like move clips around because everything's connected. And this is where connected storylines or secondary storylines come, come in. I find them a big, a big boon to my productivity. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. An easy shortcut to remember this is a command G, I think G for group. I'm going to group the clips. Command G will group them, and immediately you'll see that the clips have this, this gray area at the top called a shelf. And that shelf, now you have one connection point, and I can move this wherever, and I can copy and paste it, move it. And so I've related B-roll. I never have to worry about, well, am I going to get everything? I just copy, paste it, drag it. And it's a really helpful keeping uh, related content together as a connected unit. Um, here's another example where I have four clips in the primary storyline, and I want to immediately turn them into a connected clip. So one of my favorite commands is to uh, select the clips I want to turn into a secondary storyline, and then command, option, up arrow. And that'll immediately create a gap clip and connect it to it. And now I have the connected storyline. The nice thing about connected storylines is you can, now you can do everything in a connected storyline that you could in a primary storyline, which means you could, you could ripple, you can, you can roll, you could, do, you could swap clips, which you couldn't do before. And I think that's, a, again, a, a big reason why I like using these. The other thing I like about these is that these gap clips behave as timing as timing clips like so like Charles is coming in he's gonna say something well because it's connected to a gap clip I can just select the gap clip and I can trim the gap clip back as if it were a clip and now notice his audio is starting below the secondary storyline so the key decisions along the way make so you can use the gap clip in a combination with the connected storylines to do some pretty interesting things okay so that's my first, my first little tip for working smarter and faster. The other thing, I want to I move into talk about some audio stuff. I'm going to open up this uh, timeline. Of course, in 10. Dot, was it 10.3, uh, Apple introduced the, the roles. And you know, before 10.3, you know, roles were a mess. You have dialogue, music, music and effects every there, everywhere. And a quick way to clean them up is to open up the timeline index and, of course, Hit the, uh, hit the show audio lanes button, and you've got instant organization, uh, order out of chaos. It's, it's just fantastic. But what I like even further about this is that, um, and this is certainly Sam Met one of Sam Messman's favorite things he likes to talk about, is let's say I wanted to put an effect, a limiter, on just the dialogue, or maybe I want to add a compressor just to the music. Well, it's kind of challenging if the, all of these are individual clips to drop a, a particular effect on. So, what I find is to create a, a mix down. And to do that, it, it, you just click inside the timeline, press Command A, and this time I'm going to press Option G. Last time was control, um, Command G, this one's Option G because I'm actually making what's called a compound clip. As soon as I do that, it takes all of that content and brings it down to three what are called roll components. So I'm going to zoom, oh, it zooms, that's great. So you'll notice I got a little mix down badge here. So all that dialogue that you saw, saw has now been consolidated into a single role group called dialogue. And same with effects and same with music. And what's, again, fantastic about that is that you can change the volume for everything in that dialogue role container. And it, you can keyframe it, and then you can also add effects. So if I go down here uh, to the audio section, 
uh, maybe levels. I, t I typically uh, apply a limiter at the end of the effects chain that's uh, to make sure all my broadcast the uh, levels aren't peaking or distorting. So notice here I can throw that limiter right on that entire dialog uh, sub role and it's applied to everything inside it. And by the way, you still have access to everything uh, inside the compound clip. So you just open it up and you can go ahead and make tweaks, tr uh, tweaks and e even put effects individually on these clips. But I'm showing you, this, it's like you've just turned your entire timeline into this little, little mixing unit now. So these in effect become sub roll, they become sub mixes essentially for on the way out of uh, Final Cut Pro 10. So that's something that you'll find really, really useful in, when you're ready to deliver your final uh, product. Let's look at um, something that I like a lot, which is um, wor well, working with audio. Audio is a big thing because everyone, everybody, well, at least most video editors I talk to, like, audio is always the redheaded stepchild of video. And uh, there are some great little tools in, in Final Cut Pro that a lot of people don't know about. Um, I'm going to zoom in on this clip, and I'm going to play it back and see if you can hear an hear issue with this. Hmm. So you hear it's kind of like, there's some weird gulp sound. I, don't know. I still don't know what that is, but it's got to go, <laughs> okay? So my playhead's parked over the clip, and I, what I want to do is expand the components, control option S. You got to work in component mode to do this, but what I want to do is isolate that noise. I'm going to press R to bring up the uh, range selection tool, select this, and then make sure I have it selected by pressing the forward slash key. All right, we can do that all day if we want. All right, now, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna knock it out by pressing V. And what V does, of course, is it disables that section. Now, mm. we have another problem now, it just drops out and we need to have the audio consist. We need some you know, ambience there to fill in that, that spot. So what I'm gonna do is, again, use my range tool. Um, this area right here is clean, there's no noise. I'm gonna use a, a piece of that right there. I'm gonna press Command C to copy that section, move my play just a little bit before the knocked out audio, and I'm gonna use a command called paste disconnected clip, or option V. What that does is it takes that section I just copied and it pastes it right below the, uh, the section here. I'm gonna go ahead and um, move this here, just move it, adjust it a little bit. And this is fantastic because now I've got this, this ambience, but Check it out. You can also smooth the in and out. There's right here on this silence section, there are fade handles, which means you can grab these and you can feather in the amounts coming in and out of that silence so it's not so abrupt and you might not get a click or a pop. So I've got feathered, I'm feathering it in and out, and now when I play this, it should sound pretty, pretty good. There you go. I call that surgical sound removal. Okay, so that's uh, something you want to keep in your back pocket. Okay. Let's move on to some other stuff. I'm 646. <laughs> All right, so now uh, I'm gonna look at, we're gonna look at some gap stuff, timing with gaps. I'm a big fan of gap clips, and people are coming from non-linear editing systems like Final Cut 7, Premiere, and Re Resolve. Uh, their big thing is I, I don't really understand gap clips. I don't understand, like, isn't there a track select forward tool? Of why, I wanna be able to, well, your gap clips are your friend in Final Cut Pro because they do so much timing work for you. Um, so let's look at the first way I might use it in that say, let's say I have a, a bunch of content uh, stacked, stacked uh, on the timeline. Let's, I'm just gonna quickly put some stuff here. I got all this stuff here and I might be zoomed in here and I, I wanna be able to open up a space here. I want everything in, in an other NLE, I would use tracks forward and select everything and move it down. But in Final Cut, because of the magnetic timeline, all I need to do is uh, park the playhead on an edit point, press option W to create a gap clip, and then just drag out the, uh, the gap clip. So you'll see as I'm moving that gap clip, everything downstream will move with it. So gap clips become a really useful tool for, for changing timing in Final Cut Pro 10. So I use them all the time to create spaces uh, for my edits. So big, big thing there. The other thing is you want to use gap clips for other timing purposes. Like for example, um, this clip, I, let's say the client comes in and says, you know, I, I want to use another shot there, uh, this helicopter, but I, you know, we, haven't, we haven't shot it yet, but I, want, I like the timing. So you could select the clip and hit shift delete and that will create a gap clip and, and keep the timing intact, which is really handy. Um, 
Here's another scenario over here where I've used a gap clip to open, I'll just delete that for a second, to open up some space, I'll play this. Wrapped up there and thought, wow, that must be incredible to be able to see what they're seeing from the air. One thing that's unique. So again, for to open up, give them a little more breathing room there. Um, I'll just press option W to create that gap clip. So it's really nice then is I can then use that gap clip as, as a timing to, to match them. In fact, let me just uh, go down arrow. This is a fast, so I, I'm parked to the gap clip. I'm hitting the left bracket key to select the edit point, and I'm gonna down arrow it again. In Final Cut 7, we had a thing called an extend edit. Final Cut 10, it's shift X, and that will then extend whatever clip you have selected to the playhead. So that's a, a really good shortcut to shift X is an extend edit um, to move clips to wherever the playhead is parked. All right, so let's look at some other stuff. Um, let's see, oh, this is probably one of my favorite, favorite, favorite tricks. Uh, tips and that it's called the one frame gap trick. So I'm gonna select this music trip music clip and I'm gonna press Q to uh, edit, edit into the timeline. Now the way connections work in this case a connection is the connection line is right at the very first clip. So a lot of people are like all right I'm gonna move this clip or I'm gonna delete it. Well the audio is of course gonna go with it. So here's my little one frame gap trick. I'm gonna to go to the beginning of the timeline, press option W to create a timing gap, select the gap, hit control D for duration, and then type one for one frame. Now I have a one frame gap at the very head of the timeline. So when I connect music, Q, guess what it's connected to? It's connected to that one frame gap clip at the very beginning. So, and you just, you just never see it. It's just, there it is, connected. And what's nice about that, that for me is I never have to worry about any clips at the beginning. I can delete them, I can move them, and it's always connected to that one frame gap clip at the very beginning. So, little trick that you can use for um, mastering and wrangling that magnetic timeline. Um, little thing you can put to use. All right, so let's go into the connected storylines. I'm going to show you a couple things with uh, connected clips. Okay, I'm a big fan of connected clips. Like you just said, uh, like I said, you have a bunch of connected B-roll here, connected B-roll here, but there are some cases where you're going to want to override the clip connections. And, and here's a perfect example. I have a title here, and let's say I want to slip this edit. So I'm going to press the T key, and notice as I'm using the slip tool. Uh, what's happening with the connections, they're, they're all moving and I, and I don't want to do that. So really useful uh, shortcut or modifier key to deal with this so, so that the connection points stay where they need to stay is to hold down the tilde key or the grov key, whatever you prefer to call it, tilde grov, and notice you'll get a, basically what amounts to a link override um, option there. And that's nice is now, now when I slip the clip, all of the, con the connections stay exactly where they're supposed to stay. So I, I have to show this to people because they don't, um, especially people coming from track-based editors, or they just, they get frustrated. Well, why, why can't they just, why can't my connected clips stay there? They're always moving. Whatever. So that's probably one of the first things that I show people that I need to do is how to uh, temporarily uh, override uh, the clip, cl clip connection. Another option would be, now this, all, of all these clips connected to this clip, Notice that when I move this, uh, everything moves together. And this is, if you've ever watched any of Thomas Grove Carter's demos on his commercials, he uses this, he just moves just whole chunks of his story from one place to the other. I mean, hundreds of effects, hundreds of uh, music cues, and just moves them and swaps them. I mean, it, it, it's, it's truly magical to behold. And it, what's, what's nice, and that's what's the beauty of the magnetic timeline, but sometimes, like in this case, I'm moving this, but maybe I don't want that last clip to move. See, but the connect, and the reason, the reason is, is that that connection points on this clip. Again, something I, all new, all new Final Cut Pro editors should know about is the command option click. So that connection point for this 081 clip is here, but I want it here, so I'm gonna hit command option click. And notice now that connection point has been moved to this other clip. So now when I'm moving this clip, all of just, just those threes and the other ones stay put. So in terms of uh, working smarter and faster, that just being able to override those uh, clip connections and also being able to reassign where the clip connection uh, occurs is also, is also a big deal. So I'm down to 
exactly four seconds. So <laughs> I just, <laughs> I wanted to thank you guys for coming to my little quick, uh, quick tip, a smarter session. Hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you.